A potentiometer or pot is used to create an adjustable signal. They're commonly found as user controls on electronics like dimmers and audio amplifiers. I'm going to show you how to get started with the Picadev potentiometer and a Raspberry Pi. The Picadev potentiometer comes in two flavors, rotary and slide. You can follow this tutorial with either of these models. They each behave exactly the same. First up, a tour of the potentiometer. There are two Picadev connectors to allow daisy chain connections. The ID switch is for connecting multiple modules. Setting these switches will select a different address from a pool. For now, leave all these switches in the off position to use the default address. You may need to fit the knob to your Picadev potentiometer. For a slide pot, carefully push it onto the stem. For a rotary pot, first center the shaft so its notch is aligned with the center of the scale. Then carefully align the knob onto the shaft and push it down. Turn the knob to each end to check that the knob matches the scale. I'm gonna show you how to get started with the Picadev potentiometer and a Raspberry Pi. To follow along, you'll need a Raspberry Pi already set up to run like a desktop computer, a Picadev adapter for Raspberry Pi, and a Picadev potentiometer. You could be using a slider or a rotary pot today. It doesn't matter which of the potentiometers you're following along with today, they both work the same, and I'll show you examples using both anyhow. Finally, you'll need a Picadev cable to connect everything together. Mount the adapter onto the Raspberry Pi, like so. For a Raspberry Pi 4, there will be an arrow on the adapter that points towards the Ethernet connector. Connect your Picadev cable to one of the ports in the adapter, and connect your other end to your Picadev potentiometer. I'll start with the rotary pot. Connect Ethernet and HDMI for video. Finally, connect power and boot up your Pi. We're going to be working with Thonny today. First up, open Thonny and make sure you're most up to date with the Picadev packages. Go to Tools, Manage Packages, search Picadev. and install or upgrade as necessary. I'm already up to the latest stable version, so I can proceed. We're ready to begin working with the pot. Open the article for this tutorial and find the first example, reading values and changing the scale. I'm going to copy all of that code and paste it into a new script in Thonny. Click run, and I'll save this as read.py and I'll save that to a Picadev directory in my home directory. If all goes well in the shell, you should immediately start seeing some numbers appear. And if I turn the knob of the potentiometer, we can see those numbers change. Click view and make sure that you can see the plotter. If I expand that out, turn the potentiometer knob and you can see that graph update in real time. How nice is that? I can set it to about 50. Turn it all the way to the left and it's at zero and turn it all the way to the right and it's at a hundred. Let's take a look at the code. And if you happen to be working with the slide pot today, I've stopped the script. I'll just unplug my rotary pot and plug in the slider pot, rerun the script. And you can see that this works exactly the same. I can push it to a hundred and pull it down to zero. Exactly the same. We start by importing the Picadev potentiometer module. We also import a sleep function to create a delay. Next, we call the potentiometer initialization function, and that returns a potentiometer object that we assign to pot. Whenever we refer to pot, we're referring to this Picadev potentiometer. We're going to set some of the properties now. We set pot.maximum equal to 100. So that will set the value that is returned at the maximum scale. And likewise with pot.minimum, we set that to zero. So we're going to return 100 at the maximum of the scale and zero at the minimum of the scale. Then in an infinite loop, we just read pot.value and print that to the shell. And there's a short sleep for 100 milliseconds. Now with this scaling, we can modify this to whatever like realistic number you like. We could make this one and negative one. So we can use negative numbers. And now when I run the script with control R, the range of the pot has been changed. Now at the maximum, it's at one, and at the minimum, it's at negative one. 
And that's great because if we want to use the value that comes out of the pot, we don't have to do any manual scaling later on. We can just set the scale of the pot to be exactly what we need. We can even reflect the values that come out of the pot. Here, I'll set the maximum to negative one and set the minimum to positive one. And if I rerun the script, now the directionality has been inverted. When I turn it all the way to the left, I'm at positive one, and all the way to the right, I'm at negative one. If you omit these properties entirely, if they're just removed, then the potentiometer will default to zero to 100, as we can see here. So if, you, if that's all you need, then you don't even need to set the min or the max. We're going to do a code remix now, and I've swapped to the slider pot just for some variety, but of course they operate the same. Now, wouldn't it be nice to control some real hardware using this potentiometer? You know, you often see them used as dimmers or volume knobs. The Raspberry Pi doesn't have any immediately accessible hardware that we can see change when we change the value of the pot. However, this LED that you see on the back of the potentiometer is nominally a power indicator, but we actually do have control over it. We can turn this on and off as we like. And so what I propose is that we change the flashing rate of this LED depending on the location of the slide pot, since we would otherwise have to wire something else up to the Raspberry Pi to control it. Since we're talking about flashing this LED, I'll set up the scale of the pot to be some delay, and that will be in milliseconds. That delay will change how fast the LED flashes. So we can go from a maximum of say 50 to a minimum of 500. And you'll notice that maximum is smaller than minimum. We'll, we'll come back to that in a sec. Now in our infinite loop, I can probably delete this call to print. And instead I'll create a variable called delay, delay ms for milliseconds and we'll read pot.value like we did before, but I want to use a whole number for my delay. So I'll cast that as an integer. And now to control the LED on the potentiometer, we could say pot.led equals one would turn it on, zero would turn it off. If I want to invert the state of that LED though, I can just say not pot.led. And so here, what we're basically saying is toggle the state of that LED. This avoids having to first check if it's on and then do some kind of logic, depending on whether the LED is on or off. If it's on, turn it off. If it's off, turn it on. Here we're just saying invert the state. And now for the delay, we can use delay ms. And I'll save this script as flash.py and give that a run. I'm in a very bright studio, so I'm covering the LED with my hand so that you can see it there. And you can see that LED is indeed flashing. If I slide the potentiometer all the way up to the maximum, we can see the LED is flickering very quickly. And if I slide the potentiometer all the way down, we can see the LED is now blinking much more slowly. And that's why I set the minimum as larger than the maximum, because this actually represents the delay, but I want to use the knob as a flash speed. So at the maximum scale, we want the flash speed to be fastest. And so I have the smallest delay as the maximum. Now it's possible to connect multiple Picadev potentiometers together to create more complex projects. All they require is a unique setting for that ID switch that's located on the back of the device. Here I have my rotary pot, connected with a slider pot. The rotary pot I've left in that default configuration at the start of the tutorial. That's where all the switches are off. And on the slider pot, I have set the first ID switch to a one. And these each control a parameter of this RGB LED module. Here you can see we have a blue light. If I move the slider pot, that is my dimmer knob, so I can turn the brightness down. And if I turn my rotary pot, that is actually a color selector. So here we're at about cyan in the middle. And as I turn that to the left, we go through yellow, orange, and red. And if I turn it to the right, we go through a deeper blue, through purple, and then onto magenta and back to red. And so to talk to both potentiometers separately with our code, we're going to need to include 
those ID arguments in our initialization. Here's what that looks like. We have typical picadev imports, and then we have two instances of picadev potentiometer. Here's one for the color controlling pot, and here's one for the brightness controlling pot. We can set the minimum and maximum scale parameters in the initialization, but the important part here is the ID argument. This is a list of those ID switch positions. And so for the rotary color controlling potentiometer with all its ID switches off, this is a list of four zeros. For the brightness controlling potentiometer with its first ID switch on, this is also a list, but the first element is set to a one to indicate that, that switch is in the on position. Now we have two potentiometers in code and we can refer to them by their names. So here in the infinite loop, we sample color.value and assign that to C. We sample brightness.value and assign that to B. And then using some of the RGB LED functions, we extract a color and fill the LEDs with that color. And then we set the brightness to B, that brightness parameter. And so with like 20, 24 lines of code, we have this code that's able to sample two different pots independently and control the brightness and color of some Picadev RGB LEDs. And there you have it. We were able to connect to a Picadev potentiometer and read its value, change the scale to more convenient values, did a little bit of a code remix to control some real hardware using the potentiometer. And then uh, as a where to from here, here's a nice RGB LED dimmer and color selector project that you might want to continue with. If you make something cool from these starter projects or you just have some questions, let us know on the forums. We're full-time makers and happy to help. Until next time, happy making. Thank you.